welcome everybody to the uh, um, we used to call this a summer of cyber series, but it went summer, fall, winter. So I guess we're still in winter. So this is the winter of cyber series. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I'm Eric Blardo. I'm the founder and executive director of Raisa Cyber. And um, again, this is um, this is a great um, talk that we're going to have. And we're glad to have a Angela coming here. Um, she has a long list of achievements and uh, participation uh, with WISIS and Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu and RISIS and a lot of different places. And she's an active CTF participant. So I am so glad to have her here with us. So Angela uh, or Eduardo and Joanna, you want to say something before we give it back to her? Hello, um, everyone. My name is Eduardo Gamero. I am the director of the Maryland uh, Raices chapter. And um, like Eric said, thank you for being here with us. Um, on behalf of the NCR chapter, I uh, just want to let everyone know that we do have events um, in the pipeline for the rest of the year. So be on the lookout for that. And um, if you have any questions for myself or Joanna or the any of the NCR leaders, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we'll be more than happy to meet with you um, if you have any ideas or want to know more about volunteering. So with that, I will pass it off to Angie. Before Angie starts, I'm going to say this. Please <laughs> go ahead and follow us on the LinkedIn page for Raices. Follow us on Twitter so you can be alerted of these types of events across the United States, um, which we open to other members areas. Uh, follow us there. Follow us on um, LinkedIn and Twitter, as well as our YouTube channel at Raices Cyber. Um, and Hopefully, this talk will be also posted there as soon as we're done. Okay. So, thank you very much. Take it away, guys. All right. So, today we're going to be doing the Try Hack Me Junior Pen Tester Learning Path. And I believe we already shared the Learning Path link on here. Okay. And from there, I think I'll share my screen so we can start the walkthrough, but we're going to do two rooms today. The first one's going to be about offensive security. So think of like the red team world, for example. And then we're going to be think we're going to be um, working on the next room, which is not free, but it requires a try hack me uh, monthly subscription. I think it's now $8 a month. So if you're not willing to pay for that and just want to enjoy and relax the walkthrough for that, that's cool too. So I will share my screen now and we'll start the path. All right. So we're going to go to this room here. It's introduction to offensive security. It's loading a bit. And for anyone who's like in the offensive security uh, field, hello. So, and if those who are not, this is gonna be a great opportunity because we're gonna learn how to hack our first website legally, legally, disclaimer, in a safe environment. So this is for educational purposes, folks. And you're gonna learn more about like what it is to be an ethical hacker. So in this room, there are three tasks. And the first one is about hacking our first machine. So that's going to be a practical, interesting how it's a practical first, but we're going to do that. And then we're going to learn more about what it is, you know, to be a, um, like a pen tester, for example, or a red teamer or other roles and like what it is in a nutshell, what offensive security is. And then we're going to take a quiz. This is optional, but it's about, um, different cybersecurity careers. And I found it to be interesting because it didn't just mention um, offensive security roles, it mentioned other roles too. And disclaimer again, with this junior pen tester learning path, it's not entirely free, 
but some rooms are free. And I think the purpose of this learning path is to get experience of what it is to be a junior pen tester, or if you want to be a junior pen tester. And I think all the concepts are really great. I haven't finished through all of them yet, but it's, I think it's really great, uh, especially with like the, um, the subscription, whatnot, even if it's free, you'll learn a lot. I think I learned a lot more here, like in a cyber competition environment that I did actually in school. So let's begin our first task. And from here, we're gonna press start machine. And this might take a few minutes to load. And when it loads, there'll be like a show split screen. Okay, I guess today it's gonna load a lot faster, but. So it's gonna do a little split screen. If you, if you don't see this, then I would go around here, like where it says help. I, usually there's like a show split option. And once you press that, it'll split the screen. So you'll be able to see your box here. And for today's uh, box, we're using a tap box. So it's taking a little bit of time to load. But while this is loading, let's read what we're gonna plan to do today. So we're gonna be using this one tool called Go Buster. And if you've ever done cyber competitions before, or even like on the job, we use Go Buster to find example hidden directories and pages. And this is very handy, it's an automation tool, so you don't have to put it out yourself. You can just use the terminal and after you install it, whatnot, and then you can use different options such as TACU and TACW to filter out different information to find your hidden web page. Okay, now it's done loading, but I'll just continue on with this part. So let me see what the options are for TACW and TACU. Okay, so for TACU, you're gonna state the website we're scanning. That's what that means, that option means. And with TACW, it's gonna take a list of words. So we're gonna go through a list pretty much to find the hidden web pages. And this might take, I think, 30 seconds. So you can do it in two ways. You can either manually um, type this in or you can just copy it. And I like to use a little um, clipboard option and just paste that in there. And I usually press that again, that button again. And then I would go to the terminal and I would just paste it in there. And I'm gonna backspace a bit just to make sure I get rid of, rid of the white spaces. And then I would press enter. And from here it should scan, oh, let me close this little button here. It'll go through different uh, hidden directories. So like, all right, so this one's done. I was gonna say for this example here, it's very similar. So we found like an images directory and the uh, status is 301. So it's like a redirect. It is a redirect. I don't know why I'm saying like, it's a redirect. And then the second one is a 200. And that one's good because it's an okay. So meaning we can access this easily when we're gonna go to the fake bank account website. So now that we found the hidden directory, which is what we want based on this hint here, we are going to copy that, minimize this, and go to the fake big site. I just want to look at this fake big site real quick just to see what we have, because it's good to gather information. That's what a lot of um, folks in the information information offensive security uh, roles do. You, you know, you look at everything as a whole first before you want to dig deeper and go start uh, everything. So as of right now, we have a negative balance. And with this goal here, I believe when we scroll down a bit, we're going to hack the bank. So based on that hidden um, bank transfer with from the 200, we're going to transfer $2,000 from the bank account 2276 to our account number 8881. This is malicious. But again, it's for educational purposes. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to paste uh, that directory that we found from GoBuster and access it. Oh, okay. 
I didn't want to do that. All right, I'll just do that and then paste it in. All right, and just get rid of that other slash so it won't give us an error. And then press enter. And now we are in our hidden website. So that was very simple. And once we, let me see, was it 2276? We'll do that. I'm just going to put in um, based on the directions here from transfer 2000. And then um, afterwards, we should be able to get something we call a flag. So in cyber competitions, they have something called a flag. It's like a secret message of like string of text and whatnot. Sometimes it has French bases, sometimes it doesn't. And then we'll put 2000 in and press send money. So now we sent $2,000 in, cool. But in order to get this flag, it's asking for, I believe, like a little screen, like a little message. So let's click on the hints. And for those who have never done cybersecurity competitions before, hints are amazing. Use them. It's free game. It's easy to use. It helps you understand the problem better because some questions can get more complicated than others. So let's use the hint. All right. So it says when you've transferred 2000 from bank account 276 to 881, the answer will appear on the first bank page you saw. Make sure to refresh your bank account page to see the new balance. So it says to refresh, but I think before we refresh it, we should go back to where we had the negative balance first and then refresh it. Because I made a mistake before where I would refresh and like, well, where's the account balance? Well, I was like, okay, you have to go back first. So let's see if this theory is right. Refresh. Okay. So we are correct and it did change. So we have now $767.68. And the answer or the, the flag is bank hacked and we can just, I'm just gonna copy that and then put that in there and press submit. Awesome. So we have our first flag. And I will now terminate the machine. So I'm just gonna press complete for that real quick. And you can terminate the machine by pressing the power button. So let me see here. And the other one says, if you're a pen tester or security consultant, this is an exercise you perform for companies to test vulnerabilities in their web applications. So find hidden pages to investigate for vulnerabilities. Yes. They, yeah, GoBuster will probably be one of your popular tools to use when you're finding vulnerabilities. So there you go. You could now add GoBuster to your toolbox for pen testing. And we'll just press complete here. And let's go to the next test. So what is offensive security? So now that we did the practical, we're gonna learn more about what it is. So it says, we're going to break into the computer systems. So like we did before, we found a hidden website. Awesome, We've, um, we did not do this part, but there's different exercises, I think on try hacking other um, websites, training websites that I can talk about later. Uh, so there's explaining software bugs, find loopholes in applications to gain unauthorized access to them. Okay. So it also says to be a hacker, you need to behave like a hacker. I can't stress that one enough because sometimes you will find yourself in situations where it can be, get really difficult. Um, just saying from personal experience, like I've done a little bit of pen testing in the past and it is important to get into that mindset of what to look for. So you're looking for vulnerabilities and then you're also recommending patches too because we are security professionals now. It's not just about finding the vulnerability, we need to find the patches. And yes, it's before the cyber criminal. So that's our goal. And then they are also introducing the other role which is defensive security. So it's gonna be the complete opposite of what we did today. 
for this um, room. And this is the process of protecting organizations' network and computer systems by analyzing and securing any digital threats. And we're going to learn more from the other room. That's what it's saying here. So in a defensive cyber role, you, you could be investigating infected computers or devices to understand how it was hacked, tracking down cyber criminals, or monitoring infrastructure for malicious activity. So we don't need anything here. So we're just going to press complete. And then the next one is careers in cybersecurity. Now, I think, in my personal opinion, that this task is probably one of the most important tasks because folks have asked a lot in the industry, for example, how do we get started? How do we start learning? So try Hackbeat gives you a little task to tell you how to start learning. And that's true. You should break down the uh, one area you're interested in and go deep into it. So you can do a lot of try hackney exercises, uh, home labs. I think there's other there's a, there's a lot of different ways of doing this, blogs, et cetera, to get your first job in the industry. And they also have little testimonials of folks from different backgrounds. So this is giving an example that we need everybody and anybody to get into cybersecurity. It doesn't matter what your background is from before because you can use those skills in your cybersecurity roles. So we have Paul who was a construction worker and now he's a security engineer. And you can read more by clicking on the hyperlink there. And there's Cassandra, she was a music teacher and now she's a security professional. And Brandon, I mean, he's doing what we're doing today. And he's used Try Hack Me to get his first job in cyber while he was in school. So this is just an example today that, you know, if you do a lot of Try Hack Me and different um, like home apps and blogs, for example, it will help you get your first job in cyber. And they have different careers here. So they have the pen tester. This is more of like a solo role, but they do have teams. So you're looking for vulnerabilities specifically, and you're going to exploit them. And then Red Teamer, we're going to play the role of an adversary attacking organization and providing feedback from an enemy's perspective. So you're going to be in a whole team. I think this one is more uh, for like experienced folks, in my opinion, because you're going to be with a lot of folks on the Red Team from what I've seen. It could be different from others, but I noticed that a lot of folks start off with pen tester and then they go into the red teamer. And then there's security role um, engineer. There we go, security engineer. And you're going to design, monitor, and maintain security controls, networks, and systems to help prevent cyber attacks. So if that hasn't interested you enough, we're going to go to the next room, but we're going to press complete first. And awesome. So we finished the first room of the junior pen tester learning path. And you can share this on your LinkedIn. I encourage folks to share on their LinkedIn to show that you know, you've know you learned something new or Facebook, this should really say metaverse and then Twitter. So let's go to the next room, introduction to defensive security. And this one is all about threat intelligence, SOC, differ and SIM. And I just threw out different um, words out there, but SOC is Security Operations Center. This one's um, Digital Forensics Incident Response. And this is a whole blue team tool here. We'll get into it more. So this one's very different from the other room that we did before because the practical was first. So this time we're gonna do the practical last. And then this one as well, we're gonna learn more about Blue team, we're also defensive security. And then we're going to get into like SOC and other concepts. So we're going to get more specific with different teams. All right, so let's go to the first task, introduction to defensive security. And let's see. So I'm not going to read this part because we, we pretty much did this. You can read that on your own, but I'm going to go and focus on the defensive security part. So we're going to focus on two main tasks. And I really, by the way, I love this little landscape that they have here, like this little blue team shield. Uh, I don't know if there's any blue teamers on this uh, walkthrough today, but hello. 
<laughs> we're in this world now, and we're going to learn about preventing intrusions from incurring. We're going to detect intrusions when they occur and respond properly. So again, blue, defensive, red, offensive, security. Just want to put that in our heads real quick, because I think there's going to be questions that's going to ask about that. And it says some of the tasks that are related to defensive security include, so cybersecurity awareness. In my opinion, I think that should be like an all year thing because there's so many threats that's going on. There's so many breaches and other things. So it's really good to learn about cybersecurity awareness. And for those who have never uh, been in cybersecurity before or trying to get into cybersecurity, they do have something called Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and it happens in the month of October. We get to talk about cybersecurity awareness all month. So it's really fun. Um, so we're going to teach people how to protect folks from various attacks that target their systems. And then, excuse me, we're going to document and manage ac assets. So we need to protect everything. We need to manage it. There's a whole process with that. Now this one, okay, so I can also talk about this one because I did a, um, a blue team cyber defense competition. I don't know if anyone's heard of the Mid-Atlantic Cyber Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. I've done that and we had to do a lot of patching and updating. <laughs> so patch your systems, update your systems. Do not leave them from like different versions from before. Make sure that's up to date because we don't want any uh, vulnerabilities, our systems like that. No. Uh, let me see. So we're gonna set up preventive security devices. So they mentioned a few, which are like the firewall, intrusion prevention systems. So we're gonna prevent. We have um, firewall rules. So that has like a lot of ACLs or uh, access control lists. So you can, you know, allow or deny traffic that's going inside and out. And it mentions more about IPS. So you're going to block any network traffic that matches present rules and attack signatures. And then we're going to set up logging and monitoring devices here. It doesn't give a lot of information here, but pretty much if we see anything that you're not supposed to see in the network, we need to be able to know that. We will you use different tools to view that. I think that's why they mentioned SIMS, for example. Okay, so I think this one is a really good and simple question. It says, which team focuses on defensive security? So we did talk about red team first. So if it's not going to be red team, it's going to be blue team. So let's put in blue team and let's press submit. We got our flag for that one. Okay, let me see what's in the chat real quick. Huh, nice. Okay. All right, so now we're going to get to the next task, and that is areas of defensive security. So we're going to go more specific into this one. And they have two main topics, and whenever Try Hack Me or other uh, um, platforms mention like things such as two main topics, they're a big hint to what you're going to be seeing when, with the questions. So the first one is Security Operations Center, a SOC, and this is where we cover threat intelligence. And then the second one is Digital Forensics and Incident Response, Dipper, where we cover malware analysis. All right, so this one is a lot of reading. And I will let y'all read this one, but we'll just take a little bit of everything and just summarize for what each one is. So with SOC, you probably have heard of like a SOC analyst. Uh, they're, they are in with a team, a blue team, and they monitor the network and they detect vulnerabilities. So they can use like IPSs, for example, that we mentioned earlier, firewalls, SIMs, all of that. So we're detecting vulnerabilities. And within vulnerabilities, they have another um, blue team concept or team, and it's like vulnerability management. So you can learn more about that. 
I think it's a really good um, entry level role as well. And they also remediate the vulnerability. So we're not just saying, hey, we found this vulnerability. We're going to stop this. We're going to try to, you know, fix it. And then with policy violations, so this example is really great because folks should never, ever, ever, and I've actually heard people still do this, and I don't want people to do this, do not upload any sensitive information on a third-party online storage service that your organization does not approve of because that's not good <laughs> for security purposes. So make sure that we do not do that. And that's why we have policies for that. And then unauthorized activity. So like we saw from the practical before, how we were able to use example GoBuster to look for hidden directories and whatnot. On our end, we're gonna try to use like our policies, for example, and our tools to make sure that um, we're gonna block it. We're gonna block that access as much as possible before it's done or before more damage is done if we couldn't detect it earlier. And then the next one is network intrusions. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I know there's not really a thing called 100% security, but we can try our best. And again, this goes back to like uh, cybersecurity awareness training. You know, this is why it's important to educate folks about, you know, things such as network intrusions because it can happen. And it's good to communicate so we don't let that happen even further. And as you can see here, it gives an illustration of how many screens folks can look at when they're trying to, you know, mitigate, patch, all that stuff on the network. And they're all wearing blue <laughs> for this little nice illustration. And then the next one is about threat intelligence. So in a nutshell, we're gonna gather th threats. We're gonna learn more about threats. We're gonna find ways to stop the threats pretty much. So that's what this is. And it gives a nice little funnel cloud of what we're gonna do. So that's, what, that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell for threat and, um, intelligence. So we're going to defend after we figure out what's going on on the networks that seems malicious. And we're going to analyze it and collect it and whatnot. So it's a process. And yes, we will create a list of recommendations and actual steps here. And let me see. So, okay. I think we should get into digital forensics and instant response or differ. And they go hand in hand. So folks, if you want to get into Differ, it's really great. It's really fun. Uh, Digital Forensics is awesome. Did a little bit of that, used a little bit of their tools there. And there's different types of Digital Forensics. So we have the file system. So we have, you can look at overwritten files, deleted files. I forgot what tool it was that you could use. Can't remember on the top of my head. I think it was autopsy, autopsy or a different one that you can view deleted files. It's not coming to my head, but it's really awesome. And you can look at system memory. So if the attacker is writing the malicious program in memory without saving it to the disk, we can use a forensic image and analyze it. So we won't damage the, um, the image that we're trying to look at. We're gonna make a forensic image that way if, for example, it needs to go to court, whatever, you have evidence and you don't want to tamper, mess up the data. So that's great. And logs. Logs, logs, logs. Logs are great. Please use logs. Can't stress that one enough. Because <laughs> you will find more information about that. And it does mention network logs as well. So I just summed it up. Look at all the logs. And you can filter information too. So it doesn't tell you here, but I'm just letting y'all know there's different like filter options you can use for logging. 
And then one of my favorite ones is instant response. So I did this a lot in a cyber defense competition, for example. So there's different phases and it is an iterative agile process, as you can tell. There's preparation, detection, analysis, containment, eradication, recovery, and post-incident activity. So preparation, it's pretty much the how. What are we trying to understand, like with the hints, um, the incidents, there we go. What are, what are we looking at? And then detection and analysis. Now we're coming up with like a why pretty much. We're going to go and dig even further into the incident. And then the third step, once we figure out what the incident is, we need to stop it from attacking all the other systems because if we don't, it's we might lose a lot of sensitive information. We don't want that to happen because our job as blue teamer is to try to prevent and stop it from further damage. And if you notice here, with detection analysis and containment and eradication recovery, it can go back and forth because sometimes some uh, vulnerabilities, incidents are not as black and white. It can get very intense sometimes. So that's why we gotta go from containment eradication recovery to detection analysis. And, and then once we're done with that, then we go to post incident activity. So after we recovered everything and please make reports. We're gonna have a lessons learned so that we can learn and grow and prevent the similar further incidents. Okay, malware analysis. This is another, uh, you can also be a malware analyst. So that's why they're mentioning this as well. This can be a solo role and you're gonna be pretty much looking at code. So if you like coding or you want to get into coding, start today and you can look at the program itself. So it can be binary files, for example, and um, Trojan horses, it gives inf um, information about a Trojan horse and what it can do. So you would do this in a safe environment, like on a VM, for example, if you wanna analyze it, do not analyze it, you know, production, for example. You want to in, put this in a separate like lab, for example, and just analyze the information there. And then they mentioned ransomware. So this is where you probably have heard about it with hospitals and other like organizations that get affected by it every year. And it's becoming more uh, advanced these days. It's not as um, easy to detect as it once was before. So. When you think of ransomware, it's where the user is willing to pay for a ransom, so money. But don't fall for that <laughs> because that is, it can get really complicated. And that's why they're mentioning it. So we're educating folks about ransomware. And again, there's two different ways that mal malware analysts um, use, and there's static analysis and there's dynamic analysis. So we're gonna inspect the malicious program without running it. And then they also, yes, that's why I mentioned like ones and zeros, it's gonna be assembly language. So if you wanna learn about that, I think there's a lot of re free resources out there for assembly language. And then there's dynamic analysis. So we're gonna run the malware in that lab, example home lab and look at all the activities that's going on there. So you're gonna learn how the malware behaves when it's running. Very fun. It can take a lot of time sometimes, depending on what you're looking for, because assembly, <laughs> you know, you're looking at a lot of ones and zeros, for example, hex and all that stuff. So that is fun um, and a great career too, if you want to get into malware analysis. So let's get to these questions. It says, what would you call a team of cybersecurity professionals that monitors a network and its systems for malicious events? So it's a very long one here. And I like to use hints because, you know, it's awesome. And <laughs> it says SOC. So I mentioned SOC a lot. And that should be, I think, on the top here. I'm just going to copy and paste this because I don't feel like typing it out today. <laughs> 
but it is the security operations center. Yep, we're right. And this one just, well, I'll ask you, what does DIPR stand for? So this is a long one, and I believe it is Digital Forensics and Incident Response. So I'm going to copy this one as well. Sorry if I'm scrolling fast, but that's the one here, and we're going to submit that. And then this one is, which kind of malware requires a user to pay money? to regain access to their files, like encrypted files. I think we know what this one is. I mentioned it earlier. Starts with an R, ends with an E. Let's go up, make sure you know what that is. Oh gosh. And uh, it is a malicious program. So that is malware. Um, it's ransomware, sorry. <laughs> it's ransomware, because we're gonna pay for the ransom, so. Let's just put down ransomware. And that should work. Okay. So now that we in know information about Differ, SOC, threat intelligence, I think we're ready for our first practical. So in this practical, we need to press view site and it should split automatically, unlike the um, the other room where we had to press the power button. And we're gonna go through one, two, three, four, five, six, six tasks of a junior associate security analyst. So we're gonna actually use the SIM dashboard and we're gonna find the malicious IP address from alerts, make a note of it, and then click on the alert to proceed. And I'm not gonna read all this here, but it's pretty much summarizing what we're gonna um, look for, I think it's going to be a flag that we're going to be looking for while we're going through this day in the life of a junior security analyst. And pretty much what we're going to do is to look for a malicious IP address and a user that was logging at 3 a.m. That's a red flag right there. What are you doing at 3 a.m. logging in? <laughs> Folks are not working around 3 a.m. So let's look through these logs. So if we, yeah, I was gonna say here, um, when you go to messages, there's gonna, it's gonna be like green and red. So we'll just, I'm just hovering over it. This is green here, red. So that should give us an idea and of what's going on in 422, what's going on there, unauthorized connection attempt detected from IP address. And then there's a user, John, that logged in. John couldn't log in a bit. And then there's a login failure. And the account's password has expired. All right, so I'm gonna give a little hint with this one. Um, when you are, when we get to the next point, the next section of this, I would copy this IP address and save it. <laughs> because they don't tell you that. Uh, I had to learn that the hard way when I was doing this the first time. So let's um, go to the next part. Okay, cannot view that level yet. What am I? What am I missing here? I'm just trying to see if I'm missing something here. Okay, so you had to click on that red link there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scan our IP address. So remember that one IP address that we saw earlier, I told you to copy. So we're gonna paste that in here and we're gonna press submit. So yes, it was malicious because John Doe tried to log in several times and the ISP is from China as well. And it tells the city and everything about it. And it says here that there's many open source databases out there like Abuse, IPDB, Cisco, Talos Intelligence. So we can perform reputation and location check for, IP for the IP address. So now we know what they might, that for sure the my IP address is malicious. We need to go to a staff member because we are, you know, 
it's not a solo role, it is a team. So let's go to next. Now in this role, let's do some process of elimination here. We need to escalate this event, right? Let's go to the first person, Dominic Nash. Would a sales executive be the right person to go to when you find a malicious IP address? No. <laughs> Their job is to just, you know, make the sales and whatnot. And they're they're higher up too. So we don't, we're not gonna bother them. And security consultant. I know they mentioned security consultants in the past, but this person is not the right one because we're talking about a malicious IP address and it's a small incident. They're, they have other responsibilities, all right? Okay, so Car Carolyn Stone, Caroline, Carolyn Stone, information security architect. This person is very busy. She does not have time <laughs> to talk about this malicious IP address. So the only person that is really appropriate to talk to about the malicious IP address is Will. He is the SOC team lead. Now let's see if we're correct. I think that is the right person. Yes, that is the right person because you wanna bring it down as much as possible like in terms, to, um, in terms of contacting the right people. So if you're in a SOC, team to go to the SOC team lead. All right, so now that we have permission to block the malicious IP address, we can now proceed and implement the block rule. So we're gonna block the IP address that we had earlier. And here's an example of how we do that. So we have the IP address and it gives the date. We don't have to worry about the date. So we're just gonna put the IP address right here and press block and then we have our flag. So this is our flag. And in this case, it has friends braces. And that is it for the practical. And if we have any questions or comments or anything like that, so we can talk about it here. But that was it for both rooms. Um, I thought it was going to be longer, but I hope that you enjoyed today's CTF walkthrough. Yeah. Thank you very much, Angie. Um, yeah, that was I great. I, I even learned a little bit here and there. <laughs> so thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for Angie? Her CTF walkthrough. <laughs> And no I also, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say no, no one has any questions. Go ahead, Angie. You were going to say something. I was going to say, I hope this uh, has encouraged folks to get into the cybersecurity field because there's different roles, as we can see today, like pen test, for example, SOC analyst, malware analyst, um, pen tester, red teamer. There's so many different roles. So if you don't like one, there's a lot to choose from. And I think that's what I liked about this these two pen tester rooms today from the pen tester learning path so yeah and uh like angie was mentioning at the beginning you know if you are um you know if you're thinking about coming into the field you can use any skills you've learned in any previous uh, places of employment in this field as well so um definitely come on over <laughs> we need yes. you just like angie mentioned again Mm -hmm. And what would you, um, Angie, what would you recommend people, um, you know, use in in tandem with uh, Try Hack Me? Should they like watch videos on YouTube or watch any of your, your content, content on YouTube or what else can they do? To, like, but, I mean, more? so my YouTube channel is mostly, it's kind of like a podcast right now. Okay. Uh, unintentional podcast they're called i call them tech cafe chats and i also have another uh segment called hashtag infosec Versi, where i have like a little home lab about how to set up um a virtual machine environment pretty much using utm okay. for the mac m1 m2 chip because when i made 
uh, when I got my um, MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. I couldn't use VirtualBox. And, and uh, that was something yeah. that I was, you know, comfortable with because it's free. I was like, I want something free. I don't want to use Parallel. So yeah. uh, if you want to learn how to set up um, Ubuntu server there, I walk you through it. And disclaimer, I do okay. not set up SSH on the server, but you can do that. And I did mention in the video that customization is up to you. So if you want to learn about that, that's great. Home labs, I think, are really, really great to level up. So what we learned today, like with GoBuster, for example, you can set up yourself on Linux, mm -hmm. uh, virtual machine, or if you have um, your own like operating system set up on your laptop, that's fine too. Uh, and then set up GoBuster and maybe make a website if you want to, like a mm -hmm. vulnerable website and try to access the different, you know, hidden pages there, like test your theories, you know, start exploring the sky's the limit and don't let the imposter syndrome get to you too. Yes. Yes. That is, that is huge. Thank you for actually mentioning that because a lot of people, sometimes they get into the field and they're like, what am I doing here? You know, like, mm -hmm. am I supposed to be here? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's that way for everyone that gets into the field. You know, it's a strong uh, learning curve. Everyone in the field is constantly learning anyways because technology is constantly, you know, evolving and shifting. So um, definitely don't let that keep you down. Um, but yeah, again, thank you, Angie. Uh, thank you for mentioning what your, you know, uh, your YouTube channel is all about. And again, <laughs> Um, Angie is part of our Discord server, so if you have any questions for Angie, um, you can always reach out to her uh, on Discord. Re again, reach out to us as well if you have any questions. Um, again, does anyone have any last-minute questions for, for Angie? No? All oh, right. Wow. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Perfect. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining. And um, this has been a great session and hopefully I will, um, we see you guys again soon.